So a couple of you have reached out to me and asked if I can put together a video about processing globular clusters within Serial. So that's what this video is going to be about. It's not a difficult process, but it is a little bit different than the way that I process nebula or galaxies. It's not the only way to do this, but it's it's what I found worked best for me with my data. So give it a shot, play around with the settings. Hopefully this will give you a good foundation to get that final image to look the way that you want it to look. So let's get to it. My name is Rich and you're watching Deep Space Astro. to start off just to show you guys going to my lights folder here i have 250 images 60 seconds each as well as all my calibration frames i already went through the stacking process since we're just covering the processing piece so we will jump over into my working directory and open up my result file and just to show you what it looks like we'll switch it over to auto stretch and the first thing we're going to do is give it a crop. I prefer to do my cropping nowadays within Cyril. You can do it in Graxpert too. There's nothing wrong with it. But in Cyril, if you come out of auto stretch and go into histogram, it really gives you an overstretched view of the image. So it really makes any of your stacking artifacts um, pop out. They're just a lot easier to see. You can increase your auto stretch in Graxpert. It does something similar, um, but again, not as pronounced. So the other thing I like to do is if you right click and go selection i can preserve ratio so when i draw my box no matter where i put my cursor that box keeps its ratio so either way you don't have to do it that way you can just draw the standard rectangle around however you want to proceed so i'm going to get this positioned right click and then crap and then we'll go back into auto stretch so our eyes stop hurting from all the brightness and then i'm just going to come over to the top right and hit save so i just save the crap into my result file then we'll jump over into Graxpert, load the image that we just cropped in Cyril. We're at a 15% auto stretch by default, that's good. And I'm just going to run a background extraction using the AI method. Smoothing set at one, again, you know, just a single setting in here, you can play with it, but one generally works well for me. So we'll leave it there. Now, I am not going to do any denoising right now because I'm going to run through deconvolution in Cyril and I found that if I denoise in Graxpert before I try and do the deconvolution in Cyril, I get very strange results and I can barely even adjust the settings because of what denoising is doing to the image. So I'm going to skip denoising for now. We're going to go right over to saving, make sure we got 32-bit fits selected and then hit save process. And this is our working directory where our original stack is at, so that's fine. It's going to name the file as such and just click save. And we'll go back over into Serial and open up that Graxpert file from our working directory. And we're going to get ready to do some deconvolution. Now, I'm not going to go into uh, a lot of explaining about deconvolution. If you've never used it before, I have a video on that. I'll leave a link up in the corner here for you. But the first thing we're going to do is go into our dynamic PSF. So um, in start processing and then hit this gear icon. You could also come over to your menu up top here, image information and dynamic PSF. Either way, it'll bring it to the same box here. If I just click on my select stars button, it will find 2,432 stars. I don't want it selecting all of them like that. So amplitude range, I'm gonna give it a range from 0.1 to 0.7, and then hit my select stars again. And this time it only came back with two that fall within that range, and that's fine. That's what I want to create our PSF preview in the next step. So back up to image processing, and then deconvolution, I'm going to tick on PS from stars, which is telling deconvolution to generate this PSF from these two stars that it has detected over here. And then just hit the generate PSF button. My star is currently outside of the boundaries of this preview, so we're going to increase the PSF size. I'll just take it up to about 21. Again, select PSF from stars and then generate PSF. And that's that looks OK. I'm going to take it up just a little bit more. And again, PSF from stars. So now we are within the boundaries of that preview box. We can come over to our dynamic PSF, clear our selection and click close. We don't need that any longer. And I know from running through this a few times to get ready for this video that the default iterations at 10 and the descent step size at 0003 are a perfect fit for this image. But those are the two settings that you'll play with to get the stars looking the way that you want them to like i said watch the video on deconvolution if you haven't gone through this before so for now i'm just leaving the defaults and i'm just going to click apply all right so now that it's done just to show you guys i can 
undo the deconvolution. So there's the before and then redo it. There's the after. So it starts to look a lot better already. Just nice and, and sharp and just tightened up a little bit for us. So deconvolution is done. We're going to click close on that. Okay, so now we're going to do color calibration on there. So up in image processing, color calibration, and photometric color calibration. And we're just going to hit OK. Close when it's complete. And then image processing. We're going to remove that green tint in the image by using the remove green noise. Click apply. When that's finished, click close. Now, before we go to the next step, let's talk about the image a little bit. So the, the, the star clusters, this haze that we see in the middle, this it, it's not gas, it's not nebulosity, it's just haze. It's just an artifact of the image. It's blown out. You know, there's such a tight group of stars. There are stars in there. We want to show those stars off, right? We don't want this core to look blown out like it does here in the auto stretch. So at this point, you can continue on and we can drop into linear and we can do our stretching that's absolutely one way of doing it what i found at least with this particular image is to remove the stars first as funny as that sounds for a star cluster we're going to remove the stars but doing so will leave behind all this haze that's in there so it'll really help us see the definition in the stars in the core of the cluster so that's what we're going to do here so up into image processing star processing and then our starnet star removal and if you don't have starnet configured and running i also have a video on that i'll leave up in the corner for you but when this box comes up make sure generate star mask is selected and also tick pre-stretch linear image and then just hit execute and with starnet complete this is what we're left with right all like i said all that haze all the stuff that i'm really not interested in for this image now one of the bad things about doing it this way is you also lose any tiny galaxies that are going to be in the image you could recomposite them back in but i'm not going to go down that road with this image i'm just interested in the cluster um these other light spots could possibly be other faint galaxies not sure but they were not detected as stars so they're left behind so we're going to do the opposite of what we usually do when we remove the stars from an image we usually work on the starless image and then add the stars later but we're just interested in the stars so we are going to completely disregard this image and we're going to come up and hit the open button find the star mask that it just created, and that is what we're going to be working with. So this is an auto stretch view of just the stars, right? It still looks blown out a little bit in the middle, but again, we're in auto stretch. There's no way to adjust the auto stretch. It's fine for now. It'll look better once we do our own stretching. So at this point, we can do the denoising, which I'm going to do, although I don't really think there's too much noise in this image, but just to show you the complete workflow, this is our star mask. So we haven't done anything with this. So before we move forward, We'll go back over into Graxpert and we'll load the star mask into Graxpert and then into our denoising. I've got my denoise strength set to 0.7 and just hit denoise. This takes a few minutes, so we'll be right back as soon as it's done. All right, so denoising is complete and we're going to come over to our saving tab. Same thing as before, we're going to save it as a 32 bit fits. Click on save process. And Graxpert will not overwrite the previous file. Instead, it'll just append Graxpert again to the end of the file name. Just so I don't get turned around, I like to change that just to denoise. So I know which file I'm looking at. And then hit save. We can close Graxpert at this point. We no longer need it. And then back into Cyril, we're going to click open. And then find that file that we just renamed with the denoise in it and open that one up. Again, we're in auto stretch, so we want to drop this back to linear before we begin our stretching. And to do so, we're going to be using the generalized hyperbolic stretch. So in image processing, generalized hyperbolic stretch transformations. And just like always, even, you know, regardless if it's a cluster or if it's a nebula or a galaxy, I always tend to set my local stretch intensity pretty high and then start with the stretch factor. Now, I use this a little bit different with the clusters than I would with a nebula, for example. With a nebula, usually I would bring this over pretty far just so I can see all the data that's in the image. And then I'd start backing it down and watching the faintest areas of the nebula. And once those faint areas would start to disappear, then I would take it back up just a little bit until they reappeared. And that's where I would stop for my first initial stretch. Um, that way I'm not stretching the background or, or anything else that I don't want to pull forward. Just the data with the star clusters. That really doesn't work that well. So what I've been doing, we'll bring this back down and just over a little bit until we start seeing the cluster. Is using my mouse wheel just scrolling into the stars. And then I can see if I get too aggressive, 
if you look in this area right here so it looks like we have like little arcs going around here these are just artifacts from all the haze that we had in there. We removed most of it, but there are some artifacts still deep within the data that stretching too aggressively will pull forward. So you can see them there. You can see a little bit more over here, these little squiggling lines and such. So with a zoomed in view, that's where I'm stretching. I'm watching to make sure I don't see any of those odd artifacts coming in. And once I do, then I start backing down just a little bit, something like that, and then click apply. And then we can go back down into our fit view. And that's our starting point for our first initial stretch. The second stretch, I'll bring the local stretch intensity over about two thirds. And this time it's usually pretty sensitive. So just a little bit. At this point, we're just watching to make sure we don't blow up that core again. Click apply, leave the local stretch intensity where it currently sits at about one third and just adjust again and you know you can zoom in and check to make sure that you're not bringing out those artifacts again and at this point it's just back and forth i just use a little bit of a stretch with the local stretch intensity set at its current position two maybe three times until i feel the image looks good now you can see there's colors in the stars i'm actually relatively happy with the colors but if you wanted to try to pull the color out a little bit more if you came over to your color stretch model and change it to saturation stretch then you can actually stretch the color that's in the image. I'll do this pretty aggressively right now just so you can see what I'm talking about, but you know, it'll, it'll pull out the colors that are in there for you. So you want to go easy with it probably, but we'll just bump it just a little bit just to kind of get those oranges going and then click apply. And really that's it. Um, click close and that's a completely stretched image. Now, like always with anything that I process, I like to take it into Photoshop for some final polishing. So we're going to save this as a TIFF file, make sure it's set to 16 bit unsigned integer, and then we'll jump over into Photoshop and just, just do some minor tweaking. There's really not too much with the cluster that I bother with within Photoshop. So filter camera raw filter, and we'll start over in our light section and just playing with the kind I don't ever touch the exposure usually but everything below it go back and forth and see what it does to the image the contrast you can see one way or the other how it's operating so that is our default I'll give it just a tiny bit of contrast highlights again just a little bit to the right our shadows I'm actually going to drop the shadows down I think because as we turn them up I'm thinking I'm seeing some artifacts showing up and then our whites yeah, just a little bit with the whites, just to kind of give it a little bit more brightness. And then the blacks, we go to the left, that gets too dark. So we'll go to the right, just, just a touch. Color, I'm not going to do anything with, but you could adjust saturation. But we already stretched it in serial, so I'm not going to mess with it. Um, you know, maybe bump up the vibrance a little bit if you feel that would help. Just like that. And then in effects, dehaze and clarity. Play with both of these. So the dehazing, you can see if I go to the left... It kind of adds the haze back in, in a sense, and to the right, it takes everything out. So if you have some haze left over that you're trying to get rid of, this can help you do so. And then the clarity is just kind of like a, like a sharp, and it'll just tighten things up a little bit, but you got to be careful with it too much, and it looks crazy. So just bump it a nudge. And at that point, click OK and that's done i'd save this off as a jpeg and then and post it. so i hope that ends up being helpful for you guys play around with the workflow let me know what you think about it if you get some images that you want to share tag me over on instagram or facebook i'd love to see them i want to take this opportunity to say thank you to all my members here on youtube and buymeacoffee.com i appreciate each and every one of you thanks to everybody who's made donations to the channel it really keeps things going and like i've always said i'm having a blast with this channel it's truly become part of the hobby for me so thanks again for everybody watching we'll see you in the next video and clear skies.